everybody. This is Dull Passion. You're listening to Sonic Perspective, and I wish you a great time. And you're listening to Sonic Perspective indeed, folks. My name is Rodrigo Otas, and my guest today is someone you can call a metal pioneer. She played with Warlock for a number of years, and she's had a lengthy solo career since the mid-80s. Ladies and gentlemen, the metal queen herself, Dora Pesh. How are you today, Dora? Hey, very good, very good. I'm just getting uh, prepared for Wacken. We will play Wacken in a couple of days, and yeah, we are here in Europe, and we did already some summer festivals, and everything is good. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about the new album, Forever Warriors, Forever United. Are you going to release them together or separately? Yes, together. It is like it is yeah two records, but it is uh, my first double album. It has 25 songs on it. And from lots of anthems, like all for metal, and uh, some some cool stuff. Like there's one duet on on this album. It's uh, called "If I Can't Have You, No One Will." That was actually just coming out as a video yesterday, and mm-hmm. it's a duet with Johan Heck of Amana Mars, and uh, tons of fast songs on it, and soulful songs. And yeah, and, like. Yeah, the, the good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, I listened to it uh, the other day, and uh, it's 25 songs. So how long did it take you to write and record the whole thing? And did you have help from outside writers this time? Yeah, actually, I did, um, it took about two and a half years. And some songs I did with my band, and some songs I wrote like with my old guitar player and producer, Joey Dallin. He did like the Triumph and Agony and Fourth Major record with me. And one song was written with Jack Ponty, that's uh, the song Backstage to Heaven. And one song I wrote with David Bryan. He's the keyboarder and piano player in Bon Jovi, and he wrote this nice ballad. It cuts so deep, I think it's really killer song. Yeah, and all the other songs I did either myself, alone, or I wrote with a um, great guy. I'm working with him for many years, Andreas Brun. He's mm. the ex-guitar player of Sisters of Mercy, and we are working together for, I guess, at least 22 years, and we did most of his stuff. And, yeah, and uh, every song came out in a different way. And the first song, which was actually the, the inspiration for this album, was actually song for Lenny. Mm. It's called Living Life to the Fullest, because when Lenny left this earth, then I thought, oh man, it was so painful, so heartbreaking, and I went to his funeral, and while I was sailing in the airplane, I was like having this idea for the song Living Life to the Fullest, to honor him, to thank him, and lyrics and melody, it was immediately there, and then I called my friend Andreas, and I said, I want to record it right away. And we did, and yeah, and then that was actually when it really started, because I thought, man, you never know what will happen in one year, or if the world is still standing in one year, so I felt this kind of urgency to do a new record right now, and it took like about, yeah, two and a half years, mm-hmm. and we had about 40 songs, and then I called the record company, I said, man, you know, if I would only pick like 12 songs and one bonus song, it would be right. I would love to do a double album. And yeah, and then I said, let's think about it. And a couple of months ago, I said, okay, do it, go for it. And then I picked my 25 favorites. And, yeah. and it almost feels like a tribute to Lenny because uh, like you said, you have a song that is, was inspired by his death called Living Life to the Fullest. You covered a Motorhead song called Lost in the Ozone and you do it with him on the song It Still Hurts, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did many duets together, and I worked with Lenny, I think the first time it was in 2000, and the last time on our Wake of His album, it was It Still Hurts, and oh God, I love Lenny so much. He was my best friend. Him and Ronnie James Dio, they were my best friend in the rock world, and, and I miss him so much. And I thought it should start with Lenny, and it should end with Lenny. That's uh, the reason why living um the life to the full is best for them, but the Motorhead uh, song, Lost in the Old Zone, that finished actually the, the second side. Then there are some bonus tracks, but I love that song so much because it has so great lyrics, and I think Lenny was such a great lyricist. Like, man, he hit the head on the, the nail on the head. It was so, it was so deep. It was so, yeah, so honest, so 
way. It's so sad. Uh, that song is very sad. You know, so I don't think it's, it's beautiful. So, and the whole CD is dedicated to Lenny in the booklet. It says that uh, dedicated to Lenny Kilmister. So, and yeah, and I miss him every day. I tell you, I know many, many millions of fans feel the same. Wow, well, very cool. And uh, it's 19 original songs and six covers from Motorhead to Whitesnake, right? So who else did you cover on this album? Oh, oh, oh yeah, three covers. Uh, three covers. It's like, oh, yeah, there are three cover songs. Everything else is original. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, six bonus tracks. Six bonus tracks. Oh, um, I see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so Motorhead, Whitesnake, and what was the last cover? Oh, the last cover, it's an Italian song. It's called Caruso. And a uh, great songwriter wrote it, Lucio Dalla, and it, it's a beautiful song. And it's the first song in Italian. And last year I was in Italy, we were touring, and then so many Italian fans said, hey, you, you always, you know, sing in, in English and, and French and German and Spanish, mm. Portuguese, you've never done an Italian song. I said, that's right. And this song I always wanted to sing, and then I called my guitar player, and he's actually Italian. And I said, hey, Luca, can you coach me? Can you help me with the lyrics? He said, sure. And then we recorded it. And it was actually the last song which got recorded. And yeah, and he played it to his mom. And she immediately got tears in her eyes. Said, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, that was so, you know, so so touching. I thought, oh, yeah. And then we definitely make the record. You know, I, I like when people feel something, you know, or when it makes you feel something. So, yeah. Mm, very cool. And the first song that caught my attention was uh, All For Metal, which, of course, has icons such as Melia of Creator, Shaq Billy, uh, guys from Sabaton, and World Dane contributing. Uh, and that's quite an anthem, right? So how did you come up with that song? And the recordings for all the choruses yeah. and everything, was uh, they weren't done all at once, right? Yes, uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, um, uh, we came up with it yeah, a year ago or one and a half years ago. And at first it was just, it had a very nice melody, you know, a hooky chorus. And then I was a guest in Wacken last year mm-hmm. and on another festival summer brief. And I sang one song with Amona Mars because on their last album, Jans Viking, I sing a duet with Johan. It's called A Dream That Cannot Be. Mm-hmm. And uh, they invited me if I want to come up, sing the song. They did a DVD production. I said, oh yeah, great, great. So that was the first time that I didn't have my own show and I could walk around a little bit, talk to everybody, talk to all my friends and other bands. Yeah, and then I saw Jeff Waters and next to his dressing room was Boris Dane. Mm-hmm. And Boris Dane, he was a great friend of mine for many years. He did a long tour in 1988 with Megadeth, Sanctuary and Warlock. And we became great friends and we always stayed friends. And then last year I... Yeah, I asked him what he doing, and he said, well, doing his songs. And I said, yeah, me too, I'm working on a new record. And I said, I have this demo with me, do you want to check it out? And then, you know, he was immediately singing, you know, on the song. And I said, man, can we record it? It might be a video. Mm-hmm. And so, so everybody got recorded, actually, in Wacken and, and some other festivals. And it was unfortunately the last time that I've seen Boris. He looked really good. He, you know, he said he's in good spirits. And then a couple of months later, I heard that he passed, and that is, um, yeah. I actually yeah. saw you and Whirl uh, in the same festival in 2006. It was a Live and Louder festival in Sao Paulo, in Brazil. So he yeah. was there with Nevermore, and you played there just after them. Yes, yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man, all, all the great guys, man, all leaving, and I, I hope they, they go to a better place. Yeah. But, yeah. But I still always feel that their spirit is around us and yeah, and the yeah. memory, the music, but it's sad, it's, it is sad. Uh, another song that uh, couldn't go unnoticed when I listened to is uh, the one you mentioned before, If I Can't Have You, No One Will, uh, the do it with uh, Jonah Hag, right? Tell us about that one. We had this idea, uh, Tommy Bowen, my old guitar player from the Wall of Times, from the Tribe and Agony uh, days. We were always great friends, and we played uh, last year a couple of shows where we played only the Triumph and Agony album, which was like, I think, one of our best records, and it turned, uh, yeah, it, it was actually 30 years ago, it was 87, and I asked Tommy, hey, shall we celebrate a little bit? He said, oh, yes, I'd love to. So we went to play a couple of shows and did a tour in America and played three 
Sweden Rock Festival and Norway Rock. We had so much fun. And then it was like about five o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock we had to leave to take, you know, the plane. And then, you know, we were talking, talking, and we said, hey, shall we do a little jam session? So we were jamming in our hotel room, and the song, If I Can't Have You, No One Will, came out, and we did a little demo. And then I thought, man, Tommy, you know, I think Johan would be great on it. So I sent it to Johan, and, you know, and I asked him if he wants to write the lyrics for the verses, and he did, and then he sang on it. And, and now we did a video. Actually, it just came out yesterday, and I think it came out so great, so you got to check it out on YouTube. And I think it's one of the coolest songs, very different. It's like a brutal love song, kind of, yeah. yeah. And one of the songs, one of my favorite songs on the album is one I haven't heard you talk about uh, too much yet. That is the ballad. It's called Heartbroken. So tell us about that one a little bit. Yeah. Oh, Heartbroken. Oh, that, it's, it's one of my favorites. And actually... Um, the solo and all the cool licks that were played by Doug Aldrich. Oh, and cool. I always admired him and, and saw him with White Snake and Dio and now with the Dead Daisies. And yeah. we played together many festivals. And a couple of years ago, we played in Las Vegas in, in America. And, and then I asked him if he wants to come up and, you know, play a song with us. And we decided, hey, let's do Breaking the Law. Because mm-hmm. I always loved playing Breaking the Law. It was my first tour with Judas Priest. Back in the day, so I always want to say thank you. So, so we recorded making the long. We always played live. Yeah, and then Doug played, and I was blown away. It was so unbelievable. And I said, hey, Doug, if we do a new album, would you, would you maybe think of like playing a solo? He said, yes. You know, he said, just send me some stuff. You know, when you think it's like, you know, it feels right. Yeah, and then we had the song Heartbroken. I wrote it actually with Andreas Poon, and I thought, man. This could be something for Doug. And then I sent him the track, you know, was hoping that he would like it. And then he said, I love it, I love it, let's do it. And then he played all the great guitars on it. And I'm, yeah, I, I love it. And I think he's, oh, he's one of the greatest guitar players of all times and the nicest guy, too. So it's, you yeah, know, it's, it's such an honor, yeah. Yeah, I actually met him a couple of times, and the last time was uh, just a month ago here in Toronto. He was doing a clinic here, so he, he's a nice guy for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I you know, and so, and you know, so such a great player, and you yeah. know, and I always, I like when good people are playing on 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 the song on the record. It always motivates me and inspires me. And I always think like these songs are like the, the highlights. It's like, yeah, you know, like having a great, great, you know, guest or. You know, somebody you, you love for a long time, it's, it always, it's a big treat, yeah. Yeah. And tell us about the lineup of your band these days. Uh, most of the guys have been with you for, for a long time now, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, our bass player, Nick Douglas, he's with us for 28 years. Our drummer, John D, he's with us for 25 years. Mm. Luca Pichotta, the Italian guitar player, he's over 10 years with us. And Bas Mars. He's the other solo guitar player. He's from the Netherlands. He's with us like, I think, eight, nine years. And sometimes we have the special guest, Tommy Bowen, because we got along so great. So sometimes in some shows, Tommy hops on stage. And he's my guitar player from the Triumph and Agony album from mm. actually, yeah, 1987. And he's such a powerhouse. And he will join us in Wacken as well because it's a special show. It will be like yeah, the 35th anniversary show and big. You know, pyrotechnics and many guests and Tommy is coming and yeah, I think he's just as we speak he's flying over and yeah, mm-hmm. and he will join us on many many other gigs and festivals and yeah, we did the last America tour together and yeah, so we have sometimes three guitar players, so a lot of shredding and soloing wow. and you know and a yeah. lot of fun and, you know yeah and lots of energy. I love that and you know, especially Tommy, we always got it also great because. He always gives hundred eighty percent, you know, you never have to, you know, have mm. to think twice about it and he's immediately on the floor rolling in sweat and blood, you know, and it's you know, and that's what I love, you know, I love to make people feel good and you know, to get really like the energy going and so and so always, you know. He's, yeah, cool. he's, he's a funny guy too, but and, and a crazy, crazy performer and you know, it's definitely something, yeah, <laughs> to look forward to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And one thing that caught my attention is how great your voice is after all those years. Uh, what kind of care do you have with your voice these days? And do you find it more difficult to get proper rest between shows now than, uh, you know, in the 80s or 90s? Yeah, actually, uh, you know, uh, actually, when I go on stage, I can be sick as a dog. When I see the fans, that's it. The voice just is always there. It just pops out. I can, you know, bed it out. It uh, it doesn't matter before and after who had such a different story and yeah in this day and age you don't have so many day offs anymore so it's sometimes hard and when we tour in the winter time oh god you know I'm always I always think I'm fucking dying but it's like yeah you know it's, it's yeah it's, uh-huh. actually it comes with the territory but uh, it's great like playing live and you know and when you get Great feedback of the fans, of the people. Ah, oh, it's like I'm, I'm in heaven. So you know, so nothing ever hurts on stage, mm. and I don't feel any pain. Nothing, you know. I can break a leg; it doesn't matter. It's um, afterwards, yes. But um, and the touring is sometimes hard, but it, it's always worthwhile when I when I see the people, and, and it can be big or small. It can be wackel in front of whatever eighty thousand people, or it can be a small club in front of. Three, four, five hundred people. It doesn't matter. As long as I see men, we are connecting, and you know. And I, 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 I live for the fans. I live for metal, and I made up my mind. I think when I was 24, and ever since, you know, that is, you know, that's um, I'm so happy that I made this decision because um, I'm so grateful and I'm, I'm so happy and. And physically, it's always it's always good. Like, and I'm a big fan of martial arts, so I do martial arts on the side to keep fit, to keep the body strong, and you don't feel any pain when you train a lot. You know, sometimes you get hit, or sometimes you know, mm. you know something happens. And then my trainer, he always says, "Okay, you can sit down and say aua aua, or you can just go on." And I think that's right, that's right. So, whatever happens on stage. You know, I don't, I don't feel any pain, and it's, um, yeah, it's pure joy. It's pure joy, and I cool. treat every concert that it could be the last. You know. And you mentioned the uh, Vakin Festival that's coming up in a few days. That's got to be a highlight for you for sure. And what can fans expect in terms of set list and performance from you? Yes, yes, actually. Yeah, many special guests will, will hop on stage and Johan Heck will come and we will probably do the new song, if I can have you, no one will. And maybe the song I Dream That Cannot Be on the last um, Mono Mars album. And then we have a couple of uh, guests. You know, I grew up in the glam rock times with like Sweet, Slate, T-Rex, Alice Cooper. And one band I always loved so much, it was Sweet. And when I was like seven, eight years old, I was a little kid, but I tell you, I was like, wow, you know, music was immediately like that was the most important thing in my life. And I actually met the guys of Sweet, Andy Scott, great guitar player, and they invited me to their anniversary a couple of weeks ago. And then I said, man, can you come to my anniversary in Wacken? And I said, yes, yes, we're coming. So we will probably perform Borrow Blitz. That was one of my favorite songs. And um, yeah. yeah, and the young fans, like maybe metalheads were like, 14, 15 years old. I don't even know if they know all these great bands from, you know, from the 70s, but some great, great songwriters, great performers, great bands. So so they will come up and, and the rest is a surprise. So, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. But a lot of pyrotechnics, fireworks, you know, the biggest show, it, the stage will look like a Mad Max stage, um, like the last Mad Max movie, Fury Road, that kind of style, a little bit like our album cover, and yeah, and it it, it will definitely look like you know, bigger than life. I hope. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, one question that probably comes up in all your interviews is, uh, what was it like starting off in the seventies, eighties, when metal was dominated by men? Do you have any reflections on that? Was it harder then than it is now, or? I think now, you know, you have much more freedom, which I think that's the best, you know, that's the best. And when you start a new band or when you want to do something, you know, you have so much more opportunity to, you know, to reach, you know, your fan base, you know, and do whatever, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I think that is great. When I started, actually, it was very underground. Uh, I started in the 80s. And there weren't any magazines there in Germany. Sometimes there were some fan scenes that were photocopies, you know, like handwritten. Mm. And you had to really work 
for, you know, getting to know another band or, you know, you couldn't find out something, you know, when somebody was playing, you know, close to your country or to your city. So you definitely had to make a much more effort. And I think sometimes maybe it meant a little bit more, you know, to you. You really had to work hard to get a special record or to see a special concert. So, but I think, you know, every time has like, you know, advantages. And, and of course, I love vinyl records, which is very rare now, but we're still putting out vinyl with the whole package, like um, two double vinyl pictures, something, you know, that the fans can hang on their wall and something for collectors. And yeah, I miss that, you know, I miss that sometimes. Yeah. They just always make whatever, you know, Spotify and stuff. But I, I personally, I like to have something in my hands. And we always try to make a beautiful artwork, the booklet, the, the painting on the album cover. Usually it's painted by Jeffrey Gillespie, who's my mm. favorite artist. He's doing almost everything since the Triangle and Agony album. Yeah, and then that you have something in your hand, like a, a little piece of art. Like, and I like it that way. But in the 80s, it was, it was the beginning when metal became big. That was very exciting. There weren't any rules, no sound limitation, no security, you know. People could just come up on stage, stage diving. Sometimes they were hanging out on stage. <laughs> and it was uh, funny, so. And now it's more, yeah, yeah, more rules. But, uh, yeah, but of course I want to, you know, I, I want to have everybody be safe, you know, secure, of so course, but... Yeah, and in the 70s, when I grew up, when I was a little kid, there was no heavy metal. So when we started my, when I started my first band, I was 15, and I didn't even know that we would do heavy metal. And then some fans, they came into our rehearsal room, and I said, are you guys a heavy metal band? And we said, mm, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I guess so. So, but um, yeah, I think every time, it's, you know, it's difficult for a musician, you know, to keep your band going, to fight for the music, you know, to, you know, keep your record deal. It's, yeah, I think it's always tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one can say you were a pioneer back then, along with uh, Lita Ford, Lava Leone, and a few others, like maybe the girls in Vixen. Uh, would you consider doing a tour with uh, just the metal ladies? I think there'll be a market for that, don't you think? Yes, that would be great. I just uh, saw Lita Ford. We did uh, the Monsters of Rock Food a couple of months ago, and we got along so great. And, you know, we started talking about, you know, good old times. And we definitely said, hey, let's do something together. And, yes, I, I would love to do that. I think, you know, it would be, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's something special. I, I would love it. I would love it. I have some other really, you know, great bands which I admired, which are now doing it, or they went, um, they, they got together again. Uh, Rock Goddess uh, oh. came from England. I thought, great band. Of course, you know, girls school, we were always great friends back then. We still are. And Ollie Aaron uh, from Canada. Yeah, it would be a great idea. And eventually, you know, we, man, we have to do it. Yeah, I think yeah. It's, it's a good idea, yeah. Yeah, there's a, a couple of other uh, newer bands that you influenced as well, I think, uh, like Hailstorm, Evanescence, Lacuna Coil. Yes. Yeah, Lizzie Hale, I love. And um, yeah, Hailstorm, Arch Enemy, yeah, Lacuna Coil. Uh, yes, so many great bands, great bands. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, when we were talking, it was just, yeah, with uh, yeah, the 80s, but now, of course, many, many great bands um, in the same age and much better balance now and you know, it's, it's it's awesome so i yeah i think eventually we should do it we should all you know get together and do it and you know do maybe a big festival and yeah i i would love that yeah and uh aside from vacuum what other touring plans do you have for the new album yeah actually yeah we're doing all the summer festivals over here and then in november the tour will start november december and then we will start in March again and then worldwide tour going to America and Canada and Brazil and Russia and all over and yeah all over the world with this album and and I would like that the fans pick their favorite songs because now there are 25 new songs I love them all I really am excited about all the songs so I couldn't make the set list by myself I definitely want to ask the fans which songs they like the most of oh. course a song like All for Metal I'm pretty sure we will always play, but 
everything else, you know, there's some really nice songs on it. So I'm, I'm curious what the fans like the most. And yeah, and then we will probably play a long set. Like sometimes, yeah, sometimes we play two, three hours because, you know, you want to hear more and more songs. And of course, the old, you know, highlights you have to play, like, oh, we are burning the witches. Mm. But yeah, but it's touring nonstop and, and hopefully playing many festivals in in America. I would love that. In America, Canada, Brazil. I'm a big fan of festivals. I love it. So in Europe, there are tons of festivals. And yeah, but I know it's a little bit more rare in, in the States. So so next year, I would see you know, I'm, I'm hoping anyway, you know, go on all these festivals and, yeah, and do a tour. So yeah. And maybe what you said, you know, with all the ladies, you know, like, yeah, something, you know, something maybe. special, yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. Okay, so let's finish off with a message for the fans who want to see you live. Yes, yeah, metalheads, my dear fans and friends, I love you more than anything in this world, you know that, and I can't wait to see you guys live, and, you know, we want to play all the new songs of the new record, I hope you guys love the new record, it's called Forever Boy, Forever United, there's many anthem songs, which I hope we will sing that all together, having a great time, and I wish everybody the best, thank you so much for all the support in all these years, and stay metal, keep on rocking, and I love you with all my heart. Yes, All right, Doro, it's been a pleasure. All the best for the new album and the new tour, and uh, let's be in touch, okay? Yes, yes, most definitely. Which city are you located? I'm in Toronto. Ah, Toronto, okay, yeah. super. Yeah, Toronto, we always play when we go to Canada. Okay, okay then I definitely see you in Toronto, and yeah, and, and, and all the best, and it was great talking to you, and yeah, and stay metal. Very cool. <laughs> Have a good day, Dora. Thank you. you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Doro. Uh, please remember to subscribe to our podcast in order to get notified of all our interviews as well as our Talking Perspectives weekly podcast discussion. And, of course, make sure you like us on Facebook, Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and visit our website at www.sonyperspectives.com. Once again, I'm Rodrigo Altaf, and I'll leave you with one of the best songs in Doro's new album, the single All for Metal. Take care, guys, and rock on. <laughs>